I'm Diana Falzone, and this is 4 for 4 SciTech. A Virginia man whose wife decided to join the one-way mission to Mars says the journey is bigger than him. Lauren, is this a tad ridiculous, or is the woman who's leaving behind her family and her husband doing this for the greater good of mankind? Look, if somebody gave me the option to go explore the galaxy and leave all my friends and family behind, I might take that option, <gasps> but, <laughs> but that's just me. However, I think, you know, she's scheduled to go on this Mars One mission, which says that they're going to launch by in the early 2020s. And I think it's just a little optimistic of a timeline. NASA says they're not going to Mars till in the 2030s. So uh, we'll see. I think she's having a lot of fun with the press for now. But we'll see when that the, the time comes, or, comes I, around. I just don't know whether, like, if she were a guy, would she have had this firestorm of criticism, this whole family issue? Like, she's really kind of coming on a lot of coming on a lot of attention for this. But like, you know, there've been so many astronauts that have gone up there. Space flight is inherently dangerous, and yet so many, you know, these these people are heroes, and yet she's being depicted as a vi as a villain. I don't know. Would a man get that? I don't know. It's an interesting take. We'll talk about long distance. I wonder if this is how people thought of Christopher Columbus and the early American settlers. So crazy to go off in this new land, never to be seen again. But I don't know. That marriage just seems like it's doomed no matter what, even if she doesn't go to Mars. If you're willing to leave that quickly, <laughs> says something. The Hitchbot team is overwhelmed by, by offers of support, and the bot could be rebuilt. This is happy news. James, can this robot attempt to hitchhike across America once again? I really hope so. It's not a question of technology. It's a question of humanity. I mean, what is wrong with people yes. that just took this robot apart in Philadelphia? Every I day mean, I ask that question. It, it just depresses me. It makes it all the way across Canada. It gets from Boston to Philly, and, and then that's it. So, yeah, you know, some tech enthusiasts in, in Philly have offered to rebuild it so I really really hope that we see it again mm -hmm. yeah what's up with that it's not like it was one of the robots stealing jobs yeah. this, this should be a lesson for people though because r hitchhiking is not only dangerous for robots it's dangerous for humans as well <laughs> just stick with the Uber it's a good safety PSA <laughs> and he was such a simple robot yeah. all he had was a GPS tracker he took pictures and he'd have a little conversation with you if you wanted to talk to him so yeah I, I hope we see Hitchbot rise again in the coming days. I feel a lot of personal blame for this. <laughs> in the past few weeks that we've had 4 for 4 SciTech, I have warned many that the robots were rising and would be taking over humanity. And I just hope that no one thought it was Hitchbot. He's a harmless <laughs> little guy. I take it all back. But they're still going to attack one day. Buzz Aldrin's moonwalk cost him 33 buckaroos. Katie, $33 barely gets you a meal for two nowadays. So what did Buzz get with his money? Which, by the way, I think translates to like over $200 now with inflation. Yes, it cost him $33. Not sure how much it cost the taxpayers, but it was mainly used to get him to and from the Air Force Base. The most interesting revelation was that he had to go to a quarantine to make sure that the moon dust didn't get to the American people. So I just love this that like now all these years later we're getting like this mm -hmm. insight into the minutiae of what was involved in this. Yeah, you know, it's an expense claim where he was driving his car to and from the base, but it's still so fascinating that like we're still getting these documents coming out and there's so much more for us to learn about what went on. Mm -hmm. I think it's great that even when you go to space, you still have to go through customs. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't so stop true. for the interstellar traveler. Um, but the other thing I love that, that Buzz Aldrin shared was that they wiped them down with these rags to get the moon dust off of them and then threw them into the ocean. And he said, what if, you know, Godzilla rises from the radioactive moon dust? It could make a great Hollywood movie someday. <laughs> right, which he said he has the rights to. But Buzz Aldrin is an interesting case because he'll give a lot of information out, but he's also coveted a lot close to his chest. Don't ever ask that man about alien life. Learned that once before. <laughs> <laughs> the Empire State Building recently became the face of extinction. What was the reason for doing this, Lauren? Right, so on Saturday night, the filmmakers of this upcoming documentary, Racing Extinction, illuminated the facade of the Empire State Building with endangered animals. And it was all to raise awareness about humanity's, humanity's role in extinction mm -hmm. and our carbon footprint and how it's, it's killing off these species. And it was really epic. I got to see it from the rooftop of a nearby building, and it was the first time that the Empire State Building has had projections like this. That's beautiful. And it's, you know, it's really timely. Like we had Cecil the Lion on there. You know, there's so many debates going on about these endangered species, and it is really a 
is front and centre for a lot of people at the moment. So I think it's really great that mm -hmm. this issue was raised in this way. Yeah. It definitely raises awareness. Up until a couple of weeks ago, I didn't even know African lions were endangered. It's interesting how it's become, it's, it, it's now in the forefront of national conversation, endangered species, so. I'm curious to see how it translates though. We're making a lot of media hoopla, which is an amazing and important thing, but will it actually translate into saving these animals or is it a lot of people who are just going to their Facebook and a part of it? Because unless you step out and try to really make a difference, it's just another you know five minute press story. So hopefully we'll see change. Now you know what we think, tell us what you think with the hashtag 444SciTech and we will see you there.